This is the all-new 2025 Ram 1500 Rebel. In this video, we're going to check out all the features, take it for a drive, and then put it to the test. That's coming up right now on Driving Sports TV. For 2025, the Ram 1500 is getting new looks, new pricing, new features, and a new trim level. Yep, there's the Tungsten Edition, which now starts at $90,000. Yikes! The model they sent us for testing is a mid-grade off-road spec called the Rebel. Bow, 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 bow. In a Rebel yell, crying more, 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 boom, 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 boom. With a Rebel yell, more, 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 oh, more, 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 boom, 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 Wow! Back to this truck. <laughs> Let us now take a moment to remember the Hemi V8. It is now gone but it will not be forgotten. In its place, we now have the SST, which stands for Straight Six Turbo. This produces a peak 420 horsepower and 469 pound-feet of torque. It is connected to an eight-speed torque flight transmission with a 392 final drive. There are two other engine options, a hybrid V6 or a higher output SST that makes 540 horsepower, but you cannot get those on the Rebel package. They're only available on other 1500s. This trim is only available in one configuration, four wheel drive, a crew cab, and a standard five foot seven inch box. With the optional towing kit, this 1500 can tow up to 11,560 pounds. Payload is limited to 1,910 pounds. You also get an assortment of power connections. Speaking of options, our truck came with a long list of them. Tech, advanced safety, air suspension, dual pane panoramic sunroof, and the bed utility set. That elevates the price from just over $64,000 all the way to $80,535 US dollars. Because the Rebel is the off-road focused trim, it comes with 33-inch Goodyear Wrangler all-terrain tires wrapped around 18-inch wheels. It also has a 1-inch lift, and it comes standard with Bilstein off-road tuned suspension. In the back, you do get a 5-foot 7-inch bed, and there's a cool party trick here. Uh, using the remote, we can simply double-click to lower the truck, thanks to the air suspension, which is an option. And then while it's busy lowering, I can also flip down the tailgate. When it gets low enough, I can then throw my gear in, put it back up, and I'm on my way. In the second row, the doors open really wide. Got a nice handle here to pull myself up. And I got mud mats throughout. Seat's fairly comfortable. I get vents, I get DC power, AC power. I also get three stages of heat on the outboard seats and a fold down armrest with cup holders. Overall, really nice interior. And this panorama sunroof just lets in so much light. I really like it back here. And of course, I also have miles between my knees and where the seat would be. I'm six foot one, legs and torso proportionate. Couldn't ask for more in the second row. And if I'm not hauling passengers, instead I'm hauling gear, it just flips up super easy. Okay, let's climb up. Oh, into this big guy. Right. Obviously they've joined the massive vertical screen club. It's powered on. Rebel. Wow. Uh, where do I even start? There is so much to look at here. First off, what really strikes me is just how much is going on. <laughs> I mean, we have the little red inlays, we have the contrast stitching, we have leather wrapped steering wheel, we have digital gauge cluster, we have massive tablet. Uh, down here, they did manage to also put in a transmission controller, so that's good. And then we have this humongous bin right here. What's under here? Ah, more bins and a slider. Oh my gosh, there's so much going on here. Wow. Actually, let's, let's just cover the basics here first. Seat, lots of power adjustments. 
Yes, pretty nice. Uh, is there heating and cooling on the seats? Let's go to comfort. Okay, so figure that out. Heated seats, that's nice. Steering wheel is also heated uh, in the tablet here. It's very comfortable. I love the design of it. Uh, we do have adaptive cruise functions on the right, gear limiter buttons, drive modes, and then also screen selection. And I don't know if I've seen a vehicle with as many screen selections as I have with this one. It's, it's a lot. <laughs> All I do is toggle down and it takes me through a number of different designs, screen setups, I can modify the heads up display in here, digital tack and speedo. You can also have the map on there, all that kind of stuff. Uh, the heads up display is fairly simple. It's right up there. Oh, wow, there's, this is a little overwhelming and I'm not even getting yet to the passenger screen. I got a little bin up here, I got a little 12 volt socket up there for accessories. What's in this system? Do we have nav? Yes, we have nav. I wonder if it'll work with voice commands. Let's give that a try. Find the nearest coffee shop. Yep, yeah, that's actually pretty good. Close to home espresso, right up the street. So navigation does work with voice commands, that's good. I wonder if I can also adjust temperatures and stuff. Set driver temperature to 65 degrees. I've set the temperature to 65 degrees. Okay, cool. So you can control your interior using voice commands if you need, so that's a nice touch. Um, I do get physical buttons for the climate on the outside of the screen. Of course, you can use Apple CarPlay with this massive display as well. And then down here, we also have this cool way of propping a phone in in front of the charger. I mean, most wireless chargers have a tendency to really, I mean, they fling your phone if you corner too hard. This one really clamps it in place. Another feature we have here is the vehicle button. Uh, in the vehicle thing, this just gives me some basics like dashboard, cameras, all that kind of stuff. And this does support a number of cameras out of the box. Plus you can add on accessory cameras. I'm not really sure how you do that, but we have a whole bunch of little slots for accessory uh, cameras in the virtual touchscreen, which is, I guess, cool. On the dashboard, this is kind of interesting. You get the off-road pages and those kind of came from the Jeep side of the business. They are a little buried in here, but if you dig deep enough, you can find it. And that'll give you your steering angle, um, all the stuff that's happening with your vehicle, whether or not you have your transfer case locked or unlocked, rear axle locked or unlocked, pitch roll, accessory gauges, all that kind of stuff. Um, I can even see the amount of articulation on the wheels. So there we go. Now over here, we do have PRND with a dial. By the way, I wanna point out everything here just feels really good to touch very high quality materials and they feel great. I mean, that that is a quality dial right there. Uh, anyway, from here we have a choice of either going to two wheel drive or four wheel drive or four low. In addition, we have a four auto, which means we can run four wheel drive on pavement uh, without causing stress to the powertrain. You really only wanna use the four wheel drive high setting if you're in slippery conditions because that will lock the transfer case and get you a 50-50 split all the time. So what are we gonna to do today? Well, first we're gonna take it out on the street to see how it drives in normal conditions. And then we're gonna bring it back here to our Peninsula Proving Grounds and test out some of these off-road features because this does have more than one or two. It might even have three. Let's go check it out. I don't know about you, but I am really curious just how quick this straight six turbo is. Three liters, six cylinders, big truck. Let's see what it can do. I'm going to line up here on a fairly level surface. Admittedly, this is not scientific, although I do have a GPS timer. I'm going to stop here. I'm putting the drive mode into sport. Uh, I'm also going to put the transmission in four-wheel drive auto because there's a little moisture in the air. So three, two, one, preload and fire. Whoa, mercy! <laughs> Okay, zero to 60 in 4.97 seconds. I'm sorry, V8 Hemi who? <laughs> wow, that was, that was shocking. I could get used to this. <laughs> who knew that we'd have like the golden age of turbocharged sixes, you know? Um, 
as a means of downsizing. Now the Hemi 8 is obviously a great engine and it is powerful and there's different versions of it and you can get tons of power with that as well too. But I don't think anybody's gonna be complaining about the performance of this Turbo 6. The new straight six, it is just absolutely fantastic. We have dual A-arm in the front and we have a five link with a solid axle in the back. Now that should help with articulation once we take this off-road in just a little bit. But right now on the road, it's smooth. It's very enjoyable. And of course, it is properly quick. Now the one that we have here is equipped with the big towing mirrors. Those are fantastic. And yes, I can flip them in if I have to, uh, to uh, cross some narrow bridges, get into a garage, or just get into a tight parking space. That's always really nice to be able to do that just with a push of a button. I'm really curious how this will feel when we go over the bridge up here, because very often when you unsettle the back of a truck, mostly because it has like no weight back there, but also the way the suspension is set up, it causes a lot of kind of movement in the back, which feels very uncomfortable. Okay, yeah, I feel a little of that, but overall, it actually feels pretty good going over that bridge there. Look at that. Camera views for our turn signals. Uh, Honda has done that for years too. They call it Lane Watch. And then Hyundai does something similar, but they put it in the gauge clusters. So it's not entirely new, but it is kind of a cool feature if you're into that. Personally, I'd rather keep my eyes up here than have to look down here. Uh, but it does give you a lot of information and maybe it'll save a life. It saves one life, totally worth it. If you watch the channel regularly, you know that I have a Ranger Raptor. And a lot of people have been kind of saying that the Ranger Raptor interior is a bit on the gaudy side, mostly because it has a couple little trace elements of like this reddish orangish. Wait till they get a load of this interior. <laughs> this just, this cranks that whole concept up to 11. Now the stereo here is of course a Harman Kardon. It sounds great. Can't play you any copyrighted music right now, but just trust me on that. Let's go ahead and switch the drive modes back. We have off-road, sport, tow. It's kind of interesting that tow is in between. It goes sport, tow, snow, auto. So, and, and that's now adjusting the air suspension. Okay, so air suspension is now adjusted. Of course, it does adjust the ride height depending on the drive mode setup. So in terms of active safety, we got a lot of stuff going on here. We have collision mitigation, we have blind spot warning. Uh, we also have rear cross traffic alerts with lots of cameras, which is great. And of course, lane detection. It is a driving assist system. I'll go ahead and turn it on, set my target speed, and now it will color between the lines. And um, yes, it is a hands-on system. I'm just taking my hands off so you can see how well it's tracking. In a moment, it will tell me to put my hands on, just like that. And uh, yeah, it seems to track okay in the middle of the lines. Now, we don't really test this in curvy roads because that's not when you're supposed to be using this system. Uh, but on straightaways, highways, long haul drives, uh, systems like that can really cut down on fatigue. The infotainment, massive. My favorite thing with these large displays is full page Apple CarPlay. And especially the fact that I can bring up on X mapping uh, when I'm doing off-road adventures, it really lets me see just a ton of detail uh, in the maps that I'm looking at, and I love that. I've now used these large tablet displays on a lot of vehicles. Um, this one, it's a little chaotic, because uh, not only did they put a ton of buttons around the perimeter, uh, you also have, you have an actual interface that's it's visually a little difficult to navigate at a glance. There's a lot going on here, and I think maybe it's just a bit too much. And then also putting all of the quick access keys at the bottom means that your eyes are going from here, way down here, and then here again. They should put the quick access keys on top, so you're here, here, here. That would be better. Uh, so I just kind of feel like maybe this needs some reworking in terms of the design but there is lots of functionality here. In my short driving of this for just a few days, it seems to work great. Oh, you might have noticed it's starting to sprinkle. Uh, wipers came on automatically because it has rain detection handy. On the street, this vehicle drives really nice, even without a load in the bed. And that's sometimes very difficult for trucks, especially trucks with a lot of horsepower. Uh, although the air suspension does help a lot here. But how does this deal with off-road conditions. Well, we're going to take this now to our Peninsula Proving Grounds to find out because this is the off-road model 
the Rebel is more than just a badge. So we're gonna test all this out right now on our course. So for our first test, we're actually gonna try something pretty straightforward. Uh, it is a quick drive on a very rough surface. Kind of like if you were driving down, um, you know, one of those fire roads that's just not very nice, but you have to make, you know, miles and miles and miles in a day. It's that kind of a road. Although it's not technically a road, it's literally a gravel pit, but same effect. So let's do this. Uh, I am gonna keep the vehicle in, no, let's switch it up. Let's go to off-road mode in there. And what do we have? happen to the vehicle now. Turn traction control off. Uh, we are in four wheel drive auto. I'm just gonna leave it in that because it didn't seem like I needed to change. And let's uh, see how the suspension feels. Put it in drive and away we go. So we're gonna get the speed up to about 25, 30 and oh, okay. This is a big truck. Oh. Yeah, it doesn't really smooth out those bumps very well. <laughs> yeah, not a desert runner. <laughs> okay, that was fun. Uh, let's try something a little bit different. Now this is our fun forest, it's our easy course, uh, but it is pretty tight. So it's gonna be interesting to see how well this size of truck can get through here. To be completely honest, I don't think there's going to be a lot to learn on this particular trail. It's really designed for crossovers, small trucks, that kind of stuff. But I was just curious, can I get a full-size truck through it? So let's find out. Now I'm going to go ahead and switch it into four high. I don't need a crawl mode. I am in off-road mode, so that still applies, and I am in drive. That's all I'm going to do. Let's see what we got. Can we get through this with this behemoth? Let's turn on cameras. Oh my gosh, so many cameras. Uh, top front. There we go, that's nice. So this has a solid rear axle, which means that it should have plenty of articulation to keep that wheel planted through this entire leg of the course, which also means that we aren't gonna get any wheel spin. Uh, so it's just not gonna be challenging for this truck. Let's see. Oh, let's see. Okay, dipping down. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that rear passenger wheel is all the way on the ground most likely. Oh, this gets tight. Okay, well this is good where I can bring my mirrors in because this is gonna get snug. Of course, pop my mirrors back out again so I can kind of see my clearance. And yeah, we're pretty tight along that tree. And then I'm gonna dip down. Oh, make sure we're not tilting too much that we hit that tree. Ho, 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 ho. We forget how long these things are. Right, good. Oh, <laughs> ease into that hole. Oh, looks like we're actually gonna, actually it looks like it's gonna have a little bit of a traction issue here. What? Can it get through without locking that rear diff? Yeah, brake vectoring works. So this truck does have brake vectoring. Uh, when it slips and wheels start spinning, it'll apply brakes to shift power to the other side of the axle. Uh, very nice feature, and we see that in a lot of crossovers these days, and it's trickled down to trucks as well. And of course, now we gotta see if we can make this corner between these two trees. It's gonna be very snug. I think we're gonna have to drive straight here. Yep, I think we'll make it. Yeah. Okay, well, uh, let's play with some ditches a little bit more right over here. So in four high, it was able to get through the easy section of our course. But now this section is a little bit more difficult. And I'm curious, how good the crawl ratio is and just how well this thing can perform in four low. Okay, well, let's set this up for this section. Now it's gonna drive different through this than a lot of the other vehicles that we've taken simply because this has a really long wheelbase. You're looking at about 145 inches. Um, so let's go ahead and put it into four low. So I'm gonna switch over to neutral. 
or low. Is it a crawl or hardcore off-road setting? No, just off-road. Do I have to hold four low? Oh, I have to hold four low. Well, that's kind of annoying. <laughs> uh, let's see, can, can I be in off-road mode and four low at the same time? Yes, it seems to not mind that. Okay, that's good. Hmm. Well, we have this great front camera with these uh, tracking lines, which look straight off of a Jeep. Uh, not a big surprise because Ram and Jeep are very closely related. Uh, our air suspension has gone all the way to maximum because we're in off-road mode. And I want to try the select speed system on this. It says use plus minus. So where's my plus minus? Is it there? Put it into drive. I'm a little confused. Oh, there we go. It is gear limit, but you have to be into drive to see what's going on. <laughs> Right. Okay, so now the vehicle is going to drive itself, and we're doing it at 0.6 miles per hour. Uh, I am just looking at the course here on this beautiful camera, making sure I don't hit my mirrors against anything. That's pretty close. I think we're okay, so let's just keep on. Yeah, this is going a little quick, so I'm actually going to turn off the select speed. I am going to lock my rear axle because we'll probably need that. And now let's ease forward. We're gonna lift some wheels off the ground. We'll just see how much articulation we have back there. Woohoo! <laughs> it's bouncy. A lot of squeaking too, actually, from the suspension. That's funny. All right. Well, let's take a look at that again and see exactly how much articulation we were able to get through that section of the course. So we're able to get through the major courses here at our Peninsula Proving Grounds today with this full-size Rebel 1500. I gotta say, it's a pretty fun truck to drive. Now, would you buy this or would you buy the competition? Well, first off, what is the competition? I mean, you gotta look at it. What, what does this thing compete with? Well, uh, let's see, it's not exactly a competitor to the F-150 Raptor, because that's more expensive than this. And it also, it's kind of built differently. It has a lot more off-road stuff. The RHO from Ram, obviously that's not a competitor because that's more like a TRX. And uh, ooh, uh, uh, hmm. Chevy Silverado ZR2, probably? That would probably be pretty close. Yeah, yeah, that'd be pretty close. Um, between the two of them, in terms of a fun truck perspective and not like, you know, a, a work truck, um, I think this truck actually, it compares nicely. This straight six is the money. I like this engine. And yeah, it's the same engine that was in the Wagoneer, and so I've driven it before. It just works really well in this particular truck. I would definitely not go with that second screen though for the passenger. It's dim and it's useless. Just get the person an iPad. It's a better experience. Okay, well we're not completely done here yet. Uh, we have a small ditch to go through for a last clearance test as we drive off the course and into the sunset. No, no sunset. It's going to rain soon. Uh, and into the gravel pit. Did I mention how narrow this particular section of the course is. It's so <sighs> Make sure we don't fall off the ridge. Yee. Okay, and that's my first drive in the 2025 Ram Rebel with the new 3.0 SST six-cylinder engine. Very nice truck. Really enjoyed it. Love these cameras, especially because this hood is so big I can't see over it. Actually, that's, that's dangerously close to the edge there. For Driving Sports TV, I'm Ryan Douthit. Thanks for watching. Be sure to like, subscribe, share videos. We make them for you. Hope you enjoy them, and we'll be back here real soon with an all-new review or adventure. You never know. <laughs> and we made it out. Yes. <laughs>